everyone welcome back to biophilia your all time study mate today we are going to continue the class 12th chapter ecosystem with its part 3 of ecological pyramids if you like this video and get some help then don't forget to like share and subscribe to your amazing channel biophilia so here we are with a new topic of the chapter that is about ecological pyramids now, ecological pyramids kya hote hai? as you can understand pyramids these are going to be some way of visual representation so it is a graphical representation of various ecological pyramids so ho sakta hai, you are going to represent the energy flow you are going to represent say for example how the things like what is the number of it or anything that is going to be represented in form of pyramids are going to be seen over here so parameters could be ho, but these are going to successively change as the tropic levels are going to change. So generally, once you consider as the perspective of producers, producers mesa sabse jada hote hai, so these will be at the base and the top carnivores are going to be at the top, that is it will be at the apex and the intermediate levels, yani top carnivores or producers ke beach ke jitne bhi tropic levels honge, all will be in the between and that is going to form the entire pyramid of your representation so sabse upar honge top carnivores sabse niche honge producers or beech mein honge aapke intermediate tropic levels so common parameters on which people try to make ecological pyramids are going to be as the number of individuals particular tropic level mein kitne honge unka biomass kitna hai and what is the energy at the different tropic levels is going to be the three things or three parameters this ke upar we are going to study in detail the ecological pyramids so the first pyramid is going to be on the basis of numbers so numbers may we are going to see three types of pyramids ek hota hai upright which is on the basis of the shape how is it uh, you know formed after collecting the data second hoga inverted shape and third hoga spindle shape so upright pyramid hai so upright pyramid is generally like this and that is what we are going to observe over here waha pe jaise upar se niche jaoge the pyramid is going to get shorter and shorter having the pointed edge at the top so upright pyramid jo hota hai most of the ecosystem considering the number is going to be same as it is a upright pyramid yani sabse niche jo hoga sabse niche honge hamare producers the plants these are going to be abundant in number because these are going to be the one who need to support all the rest of the tropic levels so sabse jyada number mein kaun milenge we are going to get the producers so at the base base is broad enough for the producers and as you go up few number of herbivores will be coming to feed onto our producers so after herbivores you are going to have carnivores which will be again less in number than compared to herbivores and producers and finally you are going to have top carnivores and these are going to be very small and these are going to be the top one because these are not going to act as prey wo top hai unko kohi nahi khayega and these are going to be very less because no one is eating them so their population should also be in control so that makes up to understand about how is a upright pyramid of number second hota hai inverted hum inverted hai yani ulta hai jiska ulta hoga it is opposite to the upright pyramid yahan pe jo base hoga wo chhota hoga whereas as you go above in the tropic levels the numbers are going to increase so here the number of organisms are going to you know higher than the preceding one and because of it it is going to be uh, you know decreasing gradually as the successive levels so size hogi choti number hoga bada jiski wajah se inverted pyramid milega so what can be the example of such inverted pyramid of number is going to be a large size tree so sabse niche hoga tree samjho ek tree hai right ek tree ke upar you are going to have number of birds so frugivorous birds honge samjho wahan pe 100 birds reh rahe hai on that one tree and on that 100 birds you are going to have about 1 lakh of parasite birds so wahan pe ectocytes honge these ectoparasites are going to be more than the number of birds and with this example you can also understand that as you are going up from the base 
you are going to see that number is going to increase whereas the size of the organism is going to decrease that is what is the characteristic of the inverted pyramid of numbers third hoga about spindle shaped pyramid jahan pe you are going to see that the base and the topmost is going to almost be equal whereas the intermediate ones becomes broadened so such example is going to be a tree which is supporting large number of herbivore birds and these herbivore birds are going to be eaten by one or two hawk which is say kind of a top carnivore bird so based on this you can remember the examples and the shape of the pyramid of the numbers the second type of pyramid or that is the category we see is biomass so biomass kya hota hai wo pehle janna zaruri hai so that you can draw the pyramid according to the data collected so biomass is going to be the amount of living matter generally it is expressed in weight so wahan pe kgs mein you are going to express it and this is also going to be generally the dry weight of it you are not going to consider the wet weight yani water content ko nikal ke jo bacha hua rahega dry matter usko aap weight mein express karoge and that too of a particular tropic level so once you get the data of the biomass you are going to form different kinds of pyramids so the first type is called as upright so as you very well know upright pyramid and second one is going to be a inverted pyramid so upright pyramid jo hota hai it is generally seen in the terrestrial ecosystem and now we will see how does it actually occur so biomass jo plants ka hoga that is the producers on to the terrestrial area these are going to support many herbivorous uh, you know animals and gradually this is going to decrease to come to the top carnivores so grass bahut zyada hoga deer aur rabbits comparatively kam honge in the biomass and then the biomass of fox might be even lesser and the top carnivores say lion tiger this is also going to decrease so there is going to be the least biomass for the top carnivores so grass ka ho sakta hai biomass 1000 kg so but as you go further into the tropic levels the biomass will decrease successively so that is a upright pyramid of biomass जो इन्वर्टेड होगा इन्वर्टेड में मेजॉरिटी टाइम्स द इन्वर्टेड इज सीन इन द केस ऑफ एक्वेटिक इकोसिस्टम सो हाउ डज इट ऑकर इट इज गोइंग टू सी दैट वेन एवर देर इज कंसिड्रेशन ऑफ बायोमास फॉर जू प्लैंगटॉन्स जू प्लैंगटॉन्स जो होते हैं उनकी लाइफ स्पैन बहुत ज़्यादा होती है as compared to that of the phycoplanktons which have a shorter life span so because of the difference in the life span once the number of generations are considered so zooplanktons ke generations jo consume hongi by the fishes is going to also matter over here so once there is a you know increased amount of biomass for fishes that is going to depend and make us to understand that there is a inverted pyramid of biomass so producers jo hai zo planktons and phytoplanktons maybe that is about 3 grams per square meter as you go to understand that this is being the feed for the you know small fishes din ka biomass ho sakta hai 8 grams per you know meter square and these small fishes will be eaten up by the large carnivore fishes which is going to be more than all the those two remaining so that gives us to understand the terrestrial ecosystem may you are going to see upright pyramid of biomass where aquatic ecosystem you are going to see inverted pyramid of biomass now the pyramid of energy so pyramid of energy ko samajhne ke liye in the previous video we had understood a law that was called as 10% law of energy transfer so that is also going to be understood over here so the pyramid energy is always upright why is it always upright because in the previous video also we have seen that the energy flow is unidirectional ek bar sun se jo energy nikal chuki hai wo wapas sun ke paas nahi aati hai it is unidirectional starting from the sun it go goes to the top Uh, you know top level of uh, tropic level and it will never come back wapas aayegi aise kabhi nahi hoga 
सो बिकॉज ऑफ दैट इट इज ऑलवेज गोइंग टू बी अपराइट पिरामिड यहाँ पे यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू सी एनी अदर शेप ऑफ पिरामिड एंड दैट इज गोइंग टू मेक अस टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट द एनर्जी कंटेंट इज गोइंग टू बी मैक्सिमम इन द प्रोड्यूसर्स दैट मीन्स द बेस वेर इन द प्रोड्यूसर्स आर प्रेजेंट विल बी हैविंग मैक्स एनर्जी एंड एज द ट्रॉपिक लेवल्स वी गो अप वी आर गोइंग टू सी दैट द एनर्जी लेवल डिक्रीजेस and because of that also we can understand that as energy is lost at each tropic level you are going to see that the tropic levels are limited in the food chain that also we had discussed in the previous one but you might also think ki ye max energy jo sabse niche hoti hai wo top level tak jaate jaate kahan chali jati hai because as per the law of thermodynamics the energy is not destroyed and now it is created so where does it go it is going to get transferred into some various forms so it will be lost as heat or even it will be liberated during respiration so whatever the organism is going to use the energy in its daily functions wahan pe wo energy lost ho jayega and because of that the top level of uh, tropic level will have lesser energy as compared to the producers so this is also going to be understood by the 10% law of linderman wherein only 10% of the energy is going to be passed on from the previous tropic level to the next tropic level so this we see ki waha pe jo grasses honge these grasses are going to get how much percentage of energy from the sun sun se unhe milega kitna energy it will be 1% very important to remember sun se 1% milega but from the grasses that is from the uh, area of producers to the next level say for example there is a deer which is going to eat the grass so deer ko jo energy milegi it is going to be 10% as per the law discussed from the deer if you go to the carnivores any sort of carnivore you can choose up so any carnivore if you take up say for example you are taking lion over here so that will also get 10% so here what you need to understand is the major source of energy hai over here we see that the sun for example is having say 10 lakh amount of energy from 10 lakh energy 1% jab producers ko milega how much it will be left out it is going to be 10000 joules left out to the grasses or to the producers 10% जब लॉस होके डियर को मिलेगा डियर के पास रह जाएगा 1000 जूल्स एंड लायन इज गोइंग टू हैव और द कार्निवोर्स विल बी लेफ्ट विथ 100 जूल्स सो हियर आल्सो यू कैन सी एज पर द डेटा दैट फर्स्ट इट वाज हैविंग 10000 देन इट केम टू 1000 एंड देन टू 100 सो यू कैन सी दैट इट इज अ अपराइट पिरामिड right and because of that as i told you the energy transfer is less and because of that there is always higher number of producers than as compared to the uh, you know consumers so producers zyada honge banane wale zyada hai khane wale kam hai so that is also one thing to remember and even since i told you you can understand by the number of individuals as well jaise jaise aap upar jaoge through the tropic levels the number is also going to decrease and energy will also decrease so abhi jo humne ecological pyramids dekhe unme kuch limitations hai and these limitations are going to be discussed over here so the first is the limitation wherein if a species is belonging to two or more tropic levels then it is not considered to form the data of the ecological pyramid for example if you consider the case of insectivorous plants so these are plants that means these are considered as producers aur agar aapne unhe insectivorous naam diya hai that means these are consuming insects that means these come under consumers so producers ka jo tropic level hoga it is t1 whereas consumers can up come up to t2 or t3 as well so this insectivorous plants can be considered into t1 t2 or t3 as well so tropic level change ho raha hai aap use kahan pe ginoge aap usko addition uska jo biomass ho number ho ya energy ho where you will consider 
you cannot consider in all because it will hamper the data so because of that reason you are not going to consider the species that belong to two or more tropic levels to so single tropic level mein reh sakte hai you are going to consider it and that becomes a limitation for the ecological pyramid the second limitation is going to be you should always consider a simple food chain you cannot consider a food web and because of that even as you know that food chain is going to be a condition of idleness food chain ho hamesha ye zaruri nahi hai whereas food web is a practical you know life uh, in nature that happens so that we had discussed in the previous one as well and because of that you can consider that ecological pyramid jo hai wo kuch uh, aise parameters ko yaad rakh ke banaya jata hai and these are going to have terms and conditions like we have considered this particular food chain and then we are forming the pyramid so that way you are going to form the pyramids and that becomes a limitation as well the third limitation is going to be you do not consider the saprophytes the decomposers and the microbes or the detrivores and because of that these organisms even being on the planet earth are not considered for forming the ecological pyramid because inko koi jagah ab kahan doge unhe jagah aap unhe decomposers ko top level pe rakhoge ya producers ke niche rakhoge so that becomes a issue and because of that these are not included and because it is not included it becomes a limitation for formation of the ecological pyramid so that was one small topic to understand regarding the ecological pyramids now we see about the second topic of this video that is ecological succession and this topic was discussed by the scientist named as hult so what is ecological succession it is the case that jo living organisms hote hai ya biotic community hoti hai it is seldom static yani bahut kam baare se hota hai ki aaj jaise hai 100 saal baad bhi wo waise ki waise hi rahe even you might have seen some changes like jo aaj pauda hai jo chhota sa hai 15 cm ka hai 2 saal baad dekhoge maybe it has grown up to 1 meter so biotic communities jo hote hai wo kabhi bhi static nahi hote hai these are always going to change as per the time changes and these will also change their interactions between the biotic and the abiotic components so ye jo bhi changes hote hai these are not going to be any how whatever they like ki aaj tum jo badhna hai kal pauda ne decide kiya abhi main badhunga nahi main chhota ho jaunga hai itme this is not going to happen so it is going to have a orderly pattern pehle flower banayega then fruit banayega aise nahi hoga pehle fruit bana liya fir flower bana liya so that is not it is having a order it is having a sequence and that is going to be contributing to the ecological succession so whatever the changes are going to happen in the you know process of succession it is going to finally come to a near equilibrium because no always jo changes hote hain these are to have some stability so equilibrium kya hota hai equilibrium is nothing but some sort of stability for example apne you know kabhi aata gunne ki koshish ki hogi so what do you do first of uh, first of all you are going to take a ball ball mein aapne samjho pura aata bhar diya aata bharne ke baad aap usme kya karoge pani add karoge ab pani add karne pe ho sakta hai pehle jab aap try kar rahe ho हो सकता है यू हैव एडेड अ लॉट ऑफ वाटर सो जब वाटर कंटेंट बढ़ जाएगा व्हाट यू विल डू यू आर गोइंग टू ऐड आटा अगेन इनटू इट और ये आप कब तक करोगे यू आर गोइंग टू डू अंटिल दिस आर इन इक्वल अप अमाउंट दे हैव सम यू नो स्टेबिलिटी एंड दे कैन फॉर्म अ डो आप तब तक ये करोगे ऐसे तो नहीं करोगे बस डालते जा रहे हो डालते जा रहे हो और वन टाइम ये ज्यादा हो रहा है ये कम हो रहा है सो दैट इज वन इट कम्स टू द नियर इक्विलिब्रियम then the ecological succession is going to be you know coming to a slow end and that community that comes nearest to the equilibrium is going to be called as the climax community it is going to be said that it is a near equilibrium because nature is so dynamic that equilibrium agar achieve ho jayega then the you know sara dharti nasht ho jayegi because no one like everyone thinks to be in equilibrium but if they happen to be in equilibrium then everything every living organism is going to die 
जो नियर इक्विलिब्रियम होगा कंप्लीट इक्विलिब्रियम अचीव नहीं होना चाहिए राइट सो दीज ग्रेजुअल एंड फेयरली प्रोडिक्टेबल चेंजेस यू कैन थिंक ऑफ लाइक एक ऐसा पॉन्ड है जहाँ पे पानी ही पानी है ये अपने दादाजी ने वगैरह टाइम से आपने सुना होगा कि यहाँ पे तो हमारे गांव में समझो एक पॉन्ड हुआ करता था एंड नाउ एज यू गो आफ्टर से फिफ्टी ईयर्स सिक्सटी ईयर्स यू माइट सी दैट द पॉन्ड इज टर्निंग इन टू अ मार्श वहाँ पे यू नो छोटे छोटे पौधों ने सारा कवर कर लिया है एरिया सो दीज चेंजेस विच आर गोइंग टू ऑफर एंड दिस इज प्रेडिक्टेबल and because of that whatever sequences are happening once you collect them togetherly you are going to call it as a ecological succession so let us now understand about how the different types of ecological succession can occur so the first type is going to be understanding the types of communities ki jo start kon karega beech mein kon kon aayega and then finally who is going to be at the near equilibrium सो so, सबसे पहले जो स्टार्ट करेगा इट इज गोइंग टू बी कॉल्ड एज पायोनियर कम्युनिटी सो पायोनियर वर्ड यू माइट हैव ऑलवेज हर्ड अबाउट दैट दिस पर्सन वाज अ पायोनियर ऑफ दिस फील्ड यानी उसने ये डेवलप करने की कोशिश की उसने ये इनिशिएटिव लिया सो दिस इनिशिएटिव कम्युनिटी और पायोनियर कम्युनिटी इज गोइंग टू बी द फर्स्ट बायोटिक कम्युनिटी दैट इज गोइंग टू कम ऑन टू अ बेयर लैंड और ऐसी कौन सी कम्युनिटीज है यू कैन हैव एग्जांपल्स ऑफ लाइकन व्हिच इज गोइंग टू कम ऑन टू अ बेयर रॉक इट कैन बी फाइको प्लैंक्टॉन्स एंड सू प्लैंक्टॉन्स दैट कम इन टू अ पॉन्ड जहाँ पे पहले लाइफ नहीं हुआ करती थी सो दैट फॉर्म्स द पायोनियर कम्युनिटी अब जैसे ही किसी ने स्टार्ट कर दिया है किसी ने वो खाली जगह को पोंकर कर लिया है एंड वंस दे हैव अंडरस्टूड दैट ओके इवन सम पीपल कैन गो इन टू दिस फील्ड देन एवरी वन इज गोइंग टू डू मै 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 एंड देन देर इज गोइंग टू बी लॉट मेनी मोर कम्युनिटीज कमिंग इन टू दैट एरिया सो अगेन दैट इज गोइंग टू हैपन ओवर हियर एज वेल कि एक आदमी ने कोई डिफरेंट पाथ चूज किया समझो यू आर स्टैंडिंग ओवर हियर इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू यू हैव टू पाथ वेदर टू गो ऑन टू द पाथ ए और यू वॉन्ट टू गो टू पाथ बी सब लोग चूज करते हैं मेनी पीपल ऑलरेडी दे हैव चूज इन पाथ ए एंड मेनी पीपल देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ क्राउड गोइंग ऑन टू द पाथ ए बट नाउ यू डिसाइड दैट नॉट टू फॉलो देम यू टेक अ न्यू पाथ यू गो टू अ बेयर एरिया जहाँ पे आपको कोई आइडिया नहीं है and once you have reached there once people see your success coming to this particular field the people who are much behind you will also try to follow you and wahan pe ek nahi honge wahan pe bahut sare log honge which are going to come and follow you so that is what to be understood over here that once the pioneer community ab ye jo samne jo ek banda khada tha wo kon ho gaya wo ho gaya aapka pioneer community अब जो बाकी के है दीज आर गोइंग टू बी कॉल्ड एज द ट्रांजिशनल कम्युनिटी एंड दीज ट्रांजिशनल कम्युनिटी आर जस्ट गोइंग टू फॉलो सम स्पेसिफिक सीरीज ऑफ यू नो इवेंट्स एंड दीज विल फॉर्म द कम्युनिटी कॉल्ड एज सेरल कम्युनिटी एज वेल सो दिस एग्जांपल्स कैन बी द ब्रायोफाइट्स द हर्ब्स श्रब्स इन द केस ऑफ जीरो सीयर वेर एज समर्स्ड फ्लोटिंग प्लांट्स इन द केस ऑफ एक्वेटिक दैट इज पॉन्ड इकोसिस्टम so the third is going to be the last community that is called as climax community jo you know relatively jab cheeze stable ho chuki hai when it is near equilibrium during that time these are going to come and such example is going to be the forests so finally jab everything has been settled when everything is growing perfectly wahan pe a climax community aage ka pura ecosystem ko sambhalegi and the example of it is going to be the forest so now as you have understood that which communities are going to participate in the you know types of succession now let's get ahead now what is the type of succession as i told you there are going to be two ecosystems ek hoga land ek hoga pond or you know one is going to be water now once they need to come into equilibrium what is going to happen you are going to see that these are the two ecosystem types the first one is called as zero shear or zerarch succession jahan pe everything is going to be very dry for example rocks rocks mein moisture bahut kam hota hai 
and these are very dry areas whereas if you consider the opposite of it it is going to be the hydrosphere jahan pe bahut zyada pani hai it is completely aquatic habitat and there is no soil no dryness so both of them ek condition extreme hai jahan pe pani bahut kam hai wahan pe ek to bahut zyada salinity hai ya bahut zyada sand hai so these are the different conditions this is extreme one case or hydrosphere pani bahut zyada hai ye ek extreme hai so once these are having two extremes that is one having more landy conditions one having more watery conditions dono kya koshish karenge ek extreme aage chal ke aayega ek extreme thoda piche chal ke aayega and they will come into a middle condition that is called as middle condition and this middle condition is nothing but the near equilibrium so they want to come to this middle area and wherein jahan pe soil bhi hai pani bhi hai and everything is going smoothly so that is the first type of uh, you know classification of succession that is going to be on the basis of the nature of habitat where it is going to start so nature of habitat ek hua you know drier conditions and the second one is going to be the watery conditions so jo succession hai wo kahan se start ho raha hai on that basis you are going to see the two types of succession the second one is going to be on the basis of type of nudity of that area so over here we see that how where is it starting like primary succession hai ya secondary succession hai So if it is a primary succession, you will see that there is going to be areas which are barren areas. वहाँ पे पहले कभी भी कोई भी living organism नहीं था, and because of that reason, it is going to be a complete new place for the biotic life to come. And such examples can be of a newly cooled volcano lava, वहाँ पे sand dunes आ गए हैं या कोई नया जो island you know it had been गायब हो चुका था, अब वो आ गया है. and uh, because of that it is a new area to conquer it is going to be a very difficult task as you can also think jaise aap abhi jo 11 12th hai wahan pe bahut zyada log hai everyone can guide you everyone can help you but once you are all alone into a new field onto a new country on a new college ho sakta hai that you know to understand the places it might be difficult for you where you have not been earlier so that is nothing but in the case of primary succession so since you don't know anything as even the you know species over here the pioneer communities do not know about the conditions it is going to be a natural process which is going to take several hundred to thousands of years and that becomes the primary succession to be a very slow process whereas the opposite to it is going to be the secondary succession jahan pe ek uh, succession hoga jo pehle se hi uh, you know life thi wahan pe so because of some circumstances all the living organisms just vanished they just uh, you know got extinct and after that uh, places like abundant farm lands yani kuch log aake wo jagah ko chhod ke chale gaye kisi ke transfer ho gaye jagah khuli khuli reh gayi so that is going to be a example of uh, you know secondary succession ya fir koi forest ko jala diya gaya koi forest forest ke you know 500 ped the 200 kaat diya ab 300 bach gaye hain so even in such conditions the succession can be you know in a better way and it can be you know started easily by the pioneer community and because of that reason because the sedimentation has already occurred wahan pe fertile land ho sakti hai and all that reasons are going to make a secondary succession to reach its climax to the you know very nearer stage as compared to the primary succession dono ko kuch saal lag sakte hai but comparison mein primary succession is going to take much more amount of time so you can consider uh, with an example कि यू you नो know, आपको एक ऐसे पूरा खुले जमीन देख दी गई यू वेंट ऑन टू सम आइलैंड और ये आइलैंड पे आपको खुला छोड़ दिया गया और ये आइलैंड पे आपको बोल दिया गया नाउ यू आर गोइंग टू लिव परमानेंटली ऑन टू दिस आइलैंड नाउ वंस यू आर टोल्ड दैट यू आर लिविंग परमानेंटली ऑन टू दिस आइलैंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू विल नीड टू फाइंड सम प्लेस वेर इन यू कैन बिल्ड अ हाउस ये सोच के आपको जाके ढूंढना पड़ेगा कि कौन सी लकड़ियाँ लेनी है घर कैसे बनाना है वहाँ से शुरुआत होगी एंड देन फाइनली यू विल फाइंड यू नो इक्विलिब्रियम प्लेस जहाँ पे आप परमानेंटली वो घर में रह सकते हो 
so such example is going to be for the primary succession whereas for example you are just told to move from one house to another say for example aapko bol diya gaya ki ek ghar jo pehle aapka city a mein tha ye city a ko aapko shift karke you are been migrating to the city b ab city b mein bhi aapko ghar pura ready made hai everything is furnished pura furnished flat aapko de diya gaya hai just aapke backpack karo and you just have to move from city a to the city b so this condition here you can have your equilibrium aap jaldi settled ho sakte ho because aapko ghar ready made mil raha hai so in such conditions this is going to be a secondary succession which in you know you can relate to the conditions jo pioneer communities hote hai jo pehli baar wahan pe sab chalu karenge unko time lagega because wahan pe aur koi nahi reh raha hai no one is to help on to that isolated island all the whole and soul is you so that is the example of primary succession secondary succession aapke lo locality mein log hai aapko help karenge and because of that of the furnished areas that you get that is example of a secondary succession the next we see is the ecosystem characters or what changes occurs during the succession so common changes are whether it is a zeric condition or a hydric conditions what is going to change that is going to be the common points for both the types first of all there is going to be change in diversity of species as we have seen itne sare types of communities hote hain and as the community changes the species are going to change so their uh, you know number is going to change the population and everything is going to change as there is going to be succession seen on to that area the second one is going to be once there is very little diversity after some time as the succession is going to enhance the degree of diversity is going to increase that is number of species are going to increase for example pioneer species mein ek aur do type ke lichen honge but as they are uh, you know reaching the climax community forest jab banega as you might have thought ki amazon rain forest koi ek raat mein cheez nahi bani hai it has taken lot many of years to have that dense you know rich diversified area so ek raat mein hone wali cheez nahi hai wo aapne bahut sare areas aise bhi sune honge that these used to be some day used to be thick forests and now they have become deserts but aapne kabhi ye suna hai ek raat mein desert ban sakta hai but ek raat mein desert utke forest banna mushkil hai so that way you can understand that from coming from a little diversity to a high degree diversity will take time and that is nothing but the succession the third common thing of all successions is going to be total biomass is going to increase because as the number of species increases biomass will also increase and as biomass increases jaise hi unki death hogi जो प्लांट्स है एनिमल्स है वो बड़ी हो जाएंगे डिकम्पोज होके जो फर्टिलिटी है ऑफ द सॉइल द ह्यूमस कंटेंट इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज एंड एज द ह्यूमस कंटेंट इंक्रीजेज द एक्वेटिक दैट इज एक्सट्रीम वाटरी कंडीशन और एक्सट्रीम ड्राई दैट इज सॉइल कंडीशन विल कम टू अ मिडिल एरिया एंड दिस मिडिल एरिया इज नथिंग बट द नियर इक्विलिब्रियम दैट बोथ द टाइप्स ऑफ सक्सेशन नीड सो दोनों कहाँ से एक पानी वाली साइड से आगे आए and एक जो होंगे वो पूरे dry area से बीच में आएंगे and that will be your magic conditions. The sixth point common in everyone is going to be the vegetational changes. जैसे communities change होंगे जैसे plant life change होगी वैसे animal life is also going to be changed. And as the animal life, you know, as the plant life is changing, animals feeding habits will also change. So that is going to be the common point about the different kinds of successions. Now we see the distilled understanding about the two types of succession. First succession है that is the zeric succession. That means when there is going to be extreme dry conditions. From the dry conditions going to a mesic conditions, what are going to be the changes that occurs? सबसे पहले आएंगे pioneer community. which is going to be starting from the lichen once these lichens are going to settle and get established onto some particular rock ab ye rock ke upar wo kya karenge samjho koi bhi ek rock le liya wo rock ke upar these lichens are going to come and settle 
once these lichen comes and settles these are going to release some chemicals some enzymes some chemicals release hone pe kya honge as the acidic substances are released wahan pe chote chote gadde ho jayenge and these small small gadde these small depressions what will happen this soil will get corroded aur wo jo rock hai unka jo you know solid part hai that will become softer and because of that release of minerals these minerals will be used by the lichens or lichens to ek aad do the to pure bade ho ke fail jayenge pure rock ke upar and as these are you know increasing in number acid substances will increase hone and slowly and steadily there will be porous rock content and porous hone ke wajah se now there are going to be formation of larger depressions wo bahut zyada bade bade छेद हो जाएंगे एंड जहाँ से यू नो पोर स्ट्रक्चर जैसे ही बढ़ जाएगा द नेक्स्ट कम्युनिटी कैन कम इन टू दैट एरिया इज गोइंग टू बी द मॉस स्टेज सो मॉस स्टेज क्या होता है मॉस स्टेज इज गोइंग टू बी वेर इन यू नो फ्रॉम द लाइक इन स्टेज डाउ द ब्रायोफाइट्स विल एंटर इन टू दैट रॉकी एरिया सो ब्रायोफाइट्स एंटर होंगे ब्रायोफाइट्स के बाद यू नो ग्रास स्टेज आएगी देन पेरीनियल ग्रास विल कम पेरीनियल यानी मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम वहाँ पे ग्रासी एरिया ही रहेगा वेदर इट इज समर विंटर और मानसून ग्रास विल बी ऑलवेज देर वैसी स्टेज आने के बाद ग्रासेस जब रहना वो सोचेंगे कि अब ग्रासेस रह सकते हैं देन वाई कान द श्रब्स गो एंड स्टे देर सो द श्रब कम्युनिटी इज गोइंग टू कम एंड यू नो गैदर ऑन टू दैट एरिया and as the shrubs are going to gather and be coming onto that rocky area but ab to wo rock nahi rahega wo pura ka pura rock dissolve ho ke now it will become like a sandy uh, you know it will become muddy place and as soon as that happens ab ye ek rock to nahi hoga aur yahan pe bahut sare rocks aur bhi honge and once these are having many rocks after few years what will happen this may become some kind of you know ubar khabar wali jagah ban jayegi aur wahan pe aapko bahut sare different types of grasses milne lagenge shrubs milne lagenge and then the climax community is going to come and this climax community once it is going to arrive over there this is going to be replaced jo shrubs honge unko replace karke hard trees aa jayenge and that becomes the forest that is the climax community सो so, जो पहले पूरा पत्थरी इलाका था वो पत्थर से भरी हुई जगह अब बहुत सुंदर फॉरेस्ट बन जाएगी ये एक रात का चमत्कार नहीं है इट हैज टेकन लॉक मेनी ऑफ इयर्स टू हैपन एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द सीक्वेंस दैट इज लाइक देन द मॉस द एनुअल ग्रास स्टेज पेरीनियल ग्रास श्रब स्टेज एंड देन फाइनली यू हैव द हार्ड ट्रीज फॉर्मिंग द फॉरेस्ट so here is the timeline that you can see in the image jahan pe lichens the bahut chote chote the lichens se mosses aaye mosses se grasses and weeds aaye and as you go ahead this is going to come to the climax of the large good you know zyada uh, saal tak rehne wale trees wahan pe aake grow karenge the next type of succession is going to be the hydra succession so hydra succession is the opposite case or the extreme opposite of the xerarch uh, condition xerarch mein dry conditions the dry rocks the ya uh, sands the hydra condition mein everything is going to be aquatic everything is made up of water now water mein se aapko middle conditions pe aana hai that means first of all you need the pioneer communities which are going to help you to you know save some you know conditions for land like things so sabse pehle paane mein spores aayenge and these spores are going to form what these spores will form the phycoplankton and as the phycoplankton are going to be developing over here they will rapidly divide and wahan pe bahut sare phycoplankton aa jayenge jaise se hi phycoplankton aayenge these are the producers so after phycoplankton has covered the pond or the water area the zooplankton will come zooplankton zoo word jo hota hai it is going to refer to animals so these are small animals which are going to feed on to the phycoplankton and as these are going to die because of their natural death so phycoplankton or zooplankton ka jo bhi organic matter hoga it is going to mix with the clay and the silt and form the bottom uh, soft mud area 
जो पानी से पूरा भरा हुआ था धीरे धीरे करके ये जैसे पॉपुलेशन उनकी बढ़ेगी सॉफ्ट मड अक्यूमलेट होना शुरू हो जाएगा तो जैसे बूंद बूंद से सागर बनेगा वैसे धीरे धीरे करके ऑल द ऑर्गेनिक मैटर विल फॉर्म यू नो लेयर ऑफ सॉफ्ट मड एंड जैसे ही सॉफ्ट मड आना शुरू हो जाएगा दिस मड विल बी रिच इन यू नो फर्टाइल एरियाज एंड वहाँ पर सबमर्ज प्लांट्स आएंगे वाई सबमर्ज बिकॉज इट इज गोइंग टू ग्रो ऑन टू द बॉटम एरियाज वहाँ पे बॉटम में जो सॉफ्ट मड है वो सॉफ्ट मड में उगेगा ये सबमर्ज प्लांट्स एंड एज द सबमर्ज प्लांट्स आर गोइंग टू यू नो अगेन दीज आर गोइंग टू डाई जैसे ही सबमर्ज प्लांट्स आएंगे तब तक आइको प्लैंकटोन सो प्लैंकटोन्स तो ऑलरेडी है दीज विल बी ऑल्सो कंट्रीब्यूटिंग टू द सॉफ्ट मड नाउ इवन द सबमर्ज प्लांट्स आर कंट्रीब्यूटिंग एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट सम विल बिकम सबमर्ज एज वेल एज फ्री फ्लोटिंग प्लांट्स and now as soon as they come again and again out of the water they will form the reed swamp stage and after the reed swamp stage wahan pe marsh meadow stage aayegi and then the scrub stage so this becomes the transitional communities jaise hi scrub stage achieve ho jayenge yani there is you know uh, almost partially water is left out but majority of it everything is going to be covered by the plants and then finally the climax community is going to come and the climax community is going to replace the scrub stage and these will grow to new greater heights and now you can have a forest areas jahan pe 100 saal 200 saal 300 saal pehle pond hua karta tha wahan pe pani hua karta tha now you may not find uh, you might not find that uh, you know pond but you have all the dense forest so that is going to occur because of the natural succession that takes place each and every time so pioneer communities jahan pe pura pani tha wahan pe sabse pehle phycoplanktons ne aake jo apne spores ko develop kiya from that stage to formation of the end forests is going to be called as the hydrarch succession so here also you can see this is a ncrt diagram that you need to see to understand the different stages of the succession sabse pehle phycoplankton submerged plant stage then submerged free floating plant stage then you come to the reed swamp stage marshmallow stage the scrub stage and finally the middle conditions of forests so that was all about the different kinds of ecological pyramids and ecological succession With this we come to the end of this video. If you like this video, अगर आपको इससे help मिली है to understand these concepts, then don't forget to let us know by your like, share and subscribe to this video and the channel. So we will meet back soon with the next part of this chapter, and that would also help you to end up this chapter very soon. And till the time we come back, keep smiling, keep studying. Bye bye everyone. Thank you.